In 1874, seven-year-old Sarah Breedlove had lost both her parents. At the age of 14, she was already married, a mother at 17, and a widow by age 20. Despite these heartbreaking events, Sarah Breedlove managed to become the first self-made female millionaire before she died in 1919. This is the rags to riches story of Madam C.J. Walker, the first self-made female millionaire in the United States. The story begins on December 23, 1867 in a small village in Delta, Louisiana. It was there that Owen Breedlove and his wife, Minerva Anderson Breedlove, welcomed their fifth child, Sarah Breedlove. Sarah was the first child in her family born into freedom after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. She had five siblings, who included an older sister and four brothers. Her older siblings and parents were enslaved by Robert W. Burney on his Madison Parish plantation. When Sarah was only five years old, in 1872, she lost her mother to cholera. Her father remarried, but also died a year later. At only seven years old, Sarah was already an orphan. Having lost both her father and mother, Sarah had to move to Vicksburg, Mississippi, where she lived with her elder sister and her husband. While living with her sister, she worked as a domestic servant. Sarah had only three months of formal education, which she undertook during Sunday school literacy lessons at a church she attended during her earlier years. To escape abuse from her brother-in-law, Sarah married Moses McWilliams in 1882 at the age of 14. Sarah and Moses welcomed their first child, Layla, on June 6, 1885. Unfortunately, another tragedy awaited Sarah. In 1887, Sarah lost her husband Moses when she was only 20 years old. Following this unfortunate event, in 1888, Sarah and her two-year-old daughter Layla moved to St. Louis, where three of her brothers lived. Sarah found work as a laundress, earning barely more than a dollar a day. While in St. Louis, Sarah joined the African Methodist Episcopal Church, where she met leading black men and women, whose education and success likewise inspired her and this made her determined to make enough money to provide her daughter with a formal education. Sarah remarried John Davis in 1894, but the marriage was troubled, and the couple later divorced around 1903. Poor diet, exhaustion, harsh products used in cleaning, and unhygienic conditions soon took a toll on Sarah. She started suffering severe dandruff and other scalp ailments, and soon her hair started falling off. Inspired by this ailment, Sarah started looking for a way to cure her disorder. She started experimenting with hair care treatments as well as other home remedies. In 1904, she was hired as a commission agent selling products for Annie Turnbow Malone, an African-American hair care entrepreneur. While working for Malone, Sarah began to take her new knowledge and developed her own product line. In July 1905, when she was 37 years old, Sarah and her daughter moved to Denver, Colorado, where she continued selling products for Malone. Soon, she had developed her own hair care business and she quit her job as a commission agent. Her former employer, Malone, accused Sarah of stealing her formula, yet the mixture had been around for hundreds of years. Shortly after moving to Denver in 1906, Sarah found love again as she married Charles Joseph Walker, and she adopted the name Madam C.J. Walker. Her husband became her business partner and provided advice on advertising and promotion since he previously worked as a newspaper advertising salesman. Together, they promoted the product and she began traveling extensively selling her products door to door, teaching other black women how to groom and style their hair. The door to door strategy proved to be very effective and her hair grower product became a major hit. In 1906, Walker put her daughter in charge of the mail order operation in Denver while she and her husband traveled throughout the southern and eastern United States to expand the business. In 1908, Walker and her husband relocated to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where they opened a beauty parlor and established Layla College to train hairstylists. As an advocate of black women's economic independence, she also opened training programs in the Walker system for her national network of licensed sales agents. In 1907, after Walker closed the business in Denver, Lelia joined her in Pittsburgh. 
In 1910, Madam C.J. Walker moved her business headquarters to Indianapolis, and she left the management of the Pittsburgh branch to Lelia. Around the same time, Lelia also persuaded her mother to establish an office and beauty salon in New York City's growing Harlem neighborhood. This idea proved to be brilliant as it became a center of African-American culture. Between 1911 and 1919, the company experienced rapid growth and immense success. Walker and her company trained and employed more than 20,000 women as sales agents, who became well-respected in their communities. In addition to training in sales and grooming, Walker showed other black women how to budget and build their own businesses and encouraged them to become financially independent. Beyond her success, Madam Walker was a prominent philanthropist and activist. She made significant donations to the NAACP, the YMCA, and black educational institutions. Walker also used her wealth and influence to support the fight against racial discrimination and to advocate for the rights of African Americans. In 1917, she was part of the delegation that visited the White House to present a petition advocating for anti-lynching legislation. Sadly, Walker died on May 25, 1919, from kidney failure and complications of hypertension at the age of only 51. Madam Walker's remains were interred in Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York City. At the time of her death, Walker was considered to be worth between a half a million and a million dollars and was the wealthiest African-American woman in the U.S. According to Walker's obituary, she said herself two years before her death that she was not yet a millionaire, but hoped to be sometime. Not that she wanted the money for herself, but for the good she could do with it. Walker's name became even more popular by the 1920s after her death, as her company expanded beyond the United States to Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Panama, and Costa Rica. After Walker died in 1919, her daughter Lelia became the president of the company. During her tenure, the company built a new headquarters and a manufacturing plant in 1927 in Indianapolis. However, the Great Depression hurt the company's sales and forced her to sell her personal art and antiques to keep the company operating. When Lelia died in 1931, her adopted daughter May Walker succeeded her until her death in 1945. In turn, May's daughter Lelia May Perry Bundles became the fourth company president. The company closed in 1981, but the 1927 building later became the Madam Walker Legacy Center.